Welcome to the screencast for chapter 4, section 5. This is the end of the ecosystem structure notes. This is about species diversity and edge effects. So what is species diversity and, and why is it important? Well, in order to have a healthy functioning ecosystem, you need to have many different types of species to fill up the different niches. And so that is why species diversity is such an important concept. Variety, abundance of species in a particular ecosystem. So we're going to start with the idea of what is species diversity. And it gets broken up into two categories. There's species richness, simply how many different species are there. In our classroom, we could count human beings, we could count the crickets, we could count beta fish, and separately we would count the goldfish. Each different species would be a, a tick mark on our page. For species evenness, we're going to talk about how abundant each of those is. Obviously, we've got lots of germs and bacteria, but the most abundant species in the classroom by far would be the human beings. There's 30 of us in a classroom, and for every four people, there's a fish, and it might be a different type of fish. So species evenness is going to be a different type of, of factor. Both of those things are good. That's my daughter, Ellie. Species richness is good. Species evenness is good as well. And really, you want to have a balance of the two. If you have all one type of species, for example, a monoculture crop of corn, an insect could come in and decimate that crop. This is what happened with the Irish potato famine. But if you have a variety of different species, you've got more resilience built into your ecosystem. Diversity is going to vary with geographical location. The most species-rich communities tend to be in the tropics, like the rainforests, the coral reefs. These are all going to be located very near the equator. Diversity is going to decrease as you move towards the poles. So again, if we're talking about Patagonia in southern South, uh, I'm sorry, southern South America, or if we're talking about the Arctic tundra, those would have less species diversity. It also makes them much more fragile ecosystems because when a disturbance happens, it's very difficult to recover. This picture shows us a difference in richness versus evenness. And both of these are okay scenarios. On the left, we've got a coral reef ecosystem and it has a lot of species richness. So we see the different colors of the different coral polyps. The picture on the right, is a birch forest. And so you can see from looking at the picture that the only thing that is clearly visible is one species of tree, and this is a birch tree. And it might support other organisms that we're not seeing, but obviously just one type of tree. Again, the benefit to having a lot of species richness, different numbers of species, is that if a tragedy comes upon one species, the other species will fill in those vacant niches. Whereas when you have species evenness, you're going to be a lot less likely to bounce back. But in a forest, this is what we tend to see with plant species. If you do have a species rich ecosystem, they tend to be productive and sustainable. So just what we've been talking about, species richness is going to give you a lot of plant productivity and a lot of sustainability withstanding disturbances better. When you guys do your homework on succession, you're going to see. So again, this is just what we've been talking about, that if a ecosystem is species rich, so has a lot of different variety, just like with our coral reef, then we tend to see an increase in plant productivity. Remember that term, NPP, net primary productivity. And we also see an increase in sustainability. Now, when you do your homework on ecosystem succession, you're going to see the terms inertia, resilience come up. And that's what we're talking about here. So to end up 4-5, we've got a science focus on species richness on islands. And these questions always tend to come up on the test. What we have here is what's called the species equilibrium model. In order to have an island be stable, we need to have species richness be 
be balanced, have equilibrium. And in order for that to happen, the incoming species need to match the exiting species numbers. So immigration with an I equaling uh, immigration with an E. Also, we need to make sure that species aren't going extinct too quickly and that if they are, that those are made up for by species coming in. You tend to see a lot more extinction on islands because there is not a location to move to if situations get bad. Remember that we've said if you are outcompeted, you've got three options. You can adapt, move, or die. Well, on an island, you don't have a whole lot of options for moving, so extinction becomes much more likely. So again, to reach equilibrium, then you should have equal incomers, outgoers, extinctions, whatever you want to call them, but those should balance out. So what determines the species richness on an island? Two things. The bigger the island is, the more species it can support, and the closer it is to mainland, the easier it is for new species to immigrate and come in. So again, you see that right here. Bigger is better, it's a larger target, and there's more resources so that you don't have as many extinctions. And the distance also, if you're closer, it's easier to find your island. It's not going to mean hours on the wing or hours floating on a log. So closer is better for getting new species in. Again, it makes immigration with an eye much, much easier. This theory might seem like there's not a whole lot of, of reason for us to learn it, but the idea is that when we urbanize areas, we create habitat islands. And we can think about an island as being a a great model for what happens when we surround areas with development. So again, useful in thinking about habitat islands, not real islands, not literal islands, but islands we've created in our habitats. We've got this little animation here that's going to show speciation on an archipelago. move this over into your viewing window and and I'm going to start the animation And we're going to talk a little bit more about speciation and those terms like you heard allopatric speciation uh, specifically um, in the coming lectures. And that's the end of lecture two, part A. The next thing that we will cover is biology concepts, especially population ecology. Um, and, and so that will be in the, uh, the next section.